So really, what is the big deal about Charlottesville? This is a word. This is a word. This is a word. So it's likely that you've heard about what happened in Charlottesville on Saturday, August 12th in 2017. And if you haven't, an internet search will probably tell you pretty much everything that you need to know. But briefly, on the evening of Friday, August 11th, a group called Unite the Right holds a rally on the campus of the University of Virginia. They carry tiki torches and chant things like blood and soil and you won't replace us and Jews won't replace us. At a synagogue near the rallies, attendees of a diversity gathering left from the back door. They felt a little threatened by the people with torches standing outside of the synagogue with the comment about the Jews and all that jazz. They even removed the sacred documents from the synagogue to protect them from being destroyed. Some say if it weren't for the presence of Antifa at that rally, they might have been attacked. Of course, since that didn't happen, there's no way to confirm that. The next day, there's another gathering of Unite the Right on the streets of Charlottesville. They're met by counter-protesters and violence ensues. And several people die, including counter-protester Heather Hare, including two officers whose helicopter went down responding to the riots. But the question remains, why is this such a big deal? Of course it's tragic that someone was killed. It's tragic that these officers died in the line of duty. It's tragic that dozens of people were injured. But let's face it, these things happen fairly often. Young people die every day all over the world. It doesn't make national news. There are violent gatherings and protests happening all over the world that don't make national news. I don't know about anyone else, but something about what happened in Charlottesville resonates differently. It resonates like Waco, like Oklahoma City, perhaps even like 9-11 and Hurricane Katrina. It resonates perhaps because what happened in Charlottesville, Virginia didn't just happen to the individuals who were present at the time. What happened in Charlottesville happened to America, which is what we US citizens call the country we live in. Forgive the arrogance. Certain events seem to stand out as defining moments, moments that challenge us, moments that demand we take a firm position and some rise to these challenges. They add their voices, they offer support, they lend their hands. Sometimes they even risk their lives. And it's nearly impossible not to be changed by moments like this, regardless of how much we resent that change. And even a welcome change can leave us a bit disoriented. So even if you're not a citizen of the United States, you may find yourself being challenged by the images, the commentary, the responses of your family, your friends, your coworkers. I mean, what does this tell us about the world we live in? What if anything has been awakened in us? What does this reaffirm about us? And what ideals about ourselves are shattered by what happened? One thing that stands out from the pretty powerful messaging that came out of the University of Virginia campus on Friday night and the following morning is that for some, the idea that black lives matter means that white lives don't. And perhaps we need to accept that as a valid fear. I mean, brave men don't gather with torches to reaffirm that they won't be replaced. To me, that's the behavior of people who are afraid for their lives. So afraid that marching with the KKK and neo-Nazis becomes a rational response. And not only for those who attended the rally, but for some who witnessed it, including the President of the United States, Donald Trump. So that now we find people acknowledging that there is indeed something under threat in the United States. Although very few seem to be able to articulate exactly what that is. So when you stood up with the Nazis and the KKK, what were you standing against? I mean, how angry and disillusioned and misguided could a person be? But they say the first step in recovery is admitting that there is a problem. It's as though the violence in Charlotte was ripping the bandage from an infected wound. And the people responsible for opening up those wounds aren't the people responsible for making them in the first place. And I think most people are willing to admit that. So even though these people may be living in fear and delirium, they're not 
the cause of it all. But even after Charlottesville, there will be some who still clench their teeth and say, we're okay. They're determined to brave the pain and afraid to look at those wounds. Maybe too afraid of the shock of it all. Maybe more willing to endure the pain than to dig out the bullet. Or maybe it's none of these things. Maybe people are trying to apply meaning where there just is none. Maybe what happened in Charlottesville, Virginia is just a fluke. It's a symbolic gesture that was just misunderstood or a hoax that took a tragic turn. And maybe we'd be better off to just forget it. Mourn the dead, repair the super Official damage and forget it. That's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself. The world is a ghetto. Big